Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I thought it would be so fun to play around with these Brusho watercolor powders and I've never used anything like this. So what I'm gonna do is play around with them, swatch them out, and then I've got a couple of different papers and artworks that I wanna try out and just try some different techniques. So make sure you stick around for all that, but we're just gonna get right into this. Now in this box, it does come with six colors, but I realized there was no dark colors. So I did go ahead and pick up dark brown and black, just in case I wanted um, something darker. So I went ahead and picked those up as well, but I'm just gonna get right into this box. And these are the colors here. So we've got alizarin crimson, turquoise, Sea green, which I think is just beautiful. Violet, this is orange, and then we've got sunburst lemon. And then it also comes with this little spritzer bottle that you can use to help spritz your paints. Now, one thing I love about these is that it actually comes with like a swatch of the colors on top. So you can just easily grab it and know what color you're getting instead of trying to read the color each time. So I think I'll go ahead and make something like that for these two but I just wanna get into this little pamphlet real quick and see what kind of information's in here. I love when companies um, send out little pamphlets for me to read. So it looks like that there is quite a variety of colors available. Now I didn't go ahead and pick up the white because I'm not really sure what I would use the white for and it looks like it's just a solid color, but some of these other colors are really pretty in here. So if I like these, at least I know I have some options, but some of them are also quite similar. Like a lot of these reds are quite similar and the yellows and stuff. So do you really need all those? That emerald green's um, pretty though. So it's giving you some tips and techniques here. So we've got this sprinkle technique where you can use your spray bottle and you know spritz some water on it. You can do different textures. So that's some bubble wrap. You can paint with them with a paintbrush. Oh, you can use bleach. Oh, that's interesting. Achieve amazing results using bleach. I didn't know you could use bleach with these. That's really interesting. Add brush to other mediums so you can get a different look. A thicken technique, so use thickened brush -o. So I guess if you use like maybe a thickening medium, and then it's just showing what other sets are available here. Usually I try not to, you know, check out techniques too much because I like to just jump in and try the product myself. You now here it looks like there's some books available on it. So some brush -o basics and then the art of brush -o. Now that is really pretty. I don't think I'm going to be making anything like that today, but uh, that's kind of neat. Okay, so the only thing I was curious about is because these come in little pots and I've seen other products before that are like powdered watercolor that have like a top on it and you can just sprinkle it like this. So the only thing was I didn't know how I was supposed to open these or how I was supposed to use them. So I did look up how to use them. And somebody had a really great tip where you can take a thumbtack like this and just push it into the top of the container and then you can sprinkle it from the top. So I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm just going to take some thumbtacks and push them into the middle of them and uh, then I'll just come back afterwards and we'll go ahead and swatch these out and see how they look. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you this first swatch in real time here, just to show you how cool these powder watercolors are. I mean, you just put a little bit of powder down on the paper and a little spritz and bam, there's like tons of color. I couldn't believe how little powder you needed to really get a lot of color. And I love this almost like fireworks effect that you get because there's all kinds of different colors mixed in within each bottle and it gives it such a pretty effect. Now I will have a few paintings that I did do using these brushos coming up later in this video so make sure you stay tuned for that. And all of this is available real time on my Patreon in case you're interested in that. I will leave the link down in the description below. After I'm done the swatches, I go ahead on the next page and I'm trying out a few different spray bottles. So I've got the one that comes in the kit and I've got this little Jane Davenport spray bottle and I actually really like this one if you don't want the colors to mix or mingle quite a bit and you want to see a little bit more of those like 
doppled effects with the colors, then the Dane Jane Davenport uh, doesn't spray out as much water. It's a little bit finer than the spritz bottle that comes in the kit, but I do like that if I want the colors to kind of mix together more and give more of a watercolory effect, as you'll see in one of the paintings that I do coming up. Then I've also got this continuous spray bottle. I think this is the Jackson's brand, but I actually don't like that at all because it just puts out way too much water, even with one little tiny spritz. So for the first little painting that I'm doing here, I wanted to try using a wax resist. You can use this in watercolor and some other water-based mediums, but basically what I'm doing is just taking a clear wax uh, I think this is an oil pastel that I had gotten previously to try to blend with oil pastels, but it's just a clear wax and I wrote my name on the piece of paper and of course I had to write it <laughs> slanted so it's more to one side than the other. And then I just took some of the Brusho crystals and I think I used a little bit of the alizarin crimson, the turquoise, and then some of the violet. However, the violet in this set didn't stand out as nicely as I was hoping it would, but there is a purple one that I might get because, spoiler alert, I do really like these brushos. But I just let all those colors sort of mix on the paper and then I sprayed it all and kind of let them mix together. And I was using hot pressed paper for this one. And for the other ones, I will be using cold pressed paper. So they work well on hot pressed and cold pressed. And then I wanted to try a couple more paintings, so I tried this silhouette one where I put a bunch of the powder down and I put a lot more than what I had put on the other paintings just because I really wanted the background to be nice and saturated and this worked amazingly well. I took that spray bottle that came with the kit because I did want this to be completely saturated I'm using the Strathmore 500 cold pressed here and I was actually super impressed with how this paper did with all that water on it and I just took a piece of paper towel and dabbed up any extra water. Now one thing I did notice is these act a little bit more like inks, however it does say that they are watercolor based, but then in the little booklet I was also reading that they are staining, and yes it did stain my fingers because as you are seeing in the second painting, I go in and anywhere where it didn't like blend out, I kind of take my finger and I blend it with my finger, but boy did my fingers stay stained for probably a couple of hours. I had to wash my hands at least a couple of times and do dishes for the powder pigment to come off. So is it more water-based? Is it more ink-based? I've seen both in different places. I've been checking online. I can't find any pigment information about these, whether it's in the little brochure that comes with it or anywhere online. There's no pigment information. So I highly doubt that these are light fast, but my gosh, are they fun to play with. And I may actually do my own light fast test at home here. So I might uh, do some swatches out on a piece of paper, stick, you know, cut it in half, stick half up in the window and just see how it does over a couple of months because I really do like these brushos and I could see myself picking up a couple more colors, especially that dark purple color. Because um, these would be really fun to add with watercolor. Like, let's say you just want to add that splashy look in the background, but you're not sure how to do it with watercolor. We just sprinkle this down, give it a spritz, and there you go. Splashy background. Like, how cool is that? So I just love these colors. I love how easy it is. Now, another thing I do want to point out is the two extra colors that I bought was the dark brown and the black were the two colors that I never used for any of these projects. So... Do you really need dark colors? I don't know. I guess maybe I gravitate towards more bright poppy colors, but they are nice to have. And I do show you guys after how I did little swatches and cut them out and stick them on the top of the bottles so that they look more like the other bottles because it's kind of hard to tell um, what pigment is in it unless you pick it up and read the name. So are these brush worth it? It depends, to be honest. If you want something that's going to be light fast and you can sell in your work, I don't know if I would trust these right away until I do my light fast testing. However, if you're going to make prints and sell prints, then absolutely these are worth it. They are so fun to play with. And that little abstract one uh, painting that I did, it's supposed to be like some lilacs because that purple color, the violet, actually reminded me of lilacs and I kind of messed up the stems and the bottom part of it, but it still looks pretty cool. Like I, I like how it turned out. So 
even though it didn't come out exactly how I want it, it's still kind of something pretty. But I really want to play around with these more, like adding them to watercolor pieces if I just want like a splashiness here. Or even with colored pencils, because you could do like a little splashy piece coming off of your work somewhere and then you go over top of it with colored pencils because these blend right into the paper. There is no pigment or powder or anything on top of the paper once this blends out. Even if you, I just give it the tiniest spritz of water, like I couldn't find any powder so I don't know how it all dissolves but it does really well so I think these are going to be really fun to play around with and I may pick up a couple of other colors but again I won't be using them on anything that I'm actually going to sell I'll be doing prints with these but they are just really fun <laughs> Now, normally I only do one piece when I'm trying out, you know, new products and stuff, but I was just having so much fun with these brushes that I ended up doing all of these. I really like this one using the Wax Resist, but I don't know if I didn't push hard enough because some of it you can still see. Now, this was the Medine Hot Pressed Paper, this was the Medine Cold Pressed Paper, and this was the Strathmore 500 Series Watercolor Paper. And this baby hardly buckled. And as you guys saw, like if you watched that part of the video, I put the water to this to really get them to blend. And I think this is my favorite one. I absolutely love how this came out. Now, let me know if you guys recognize what this is. It's a silhouette painting. And this is the Hogwarts Castle from Harry Potter, one of my favorite series. And then this was supposed to be like a lavender bouquet and I really like how this came out like you can kind of tell that it's a loose lavender and then I think I got a little spritz happy here and that just turned into a little blobby mess now I just want to show you guys real quick I sort of made some homemade swatches to go on top of this so this is the brown and I did one for the black and I'm going to show you how I did the the black as well but I basically just put it down I spritzed it with water let it dry and then I just cut it out and I cut it into a little circle and I took some tacky glue here and all I did was I tried to poke the pin towards the middle of the circle so that as it would line up the circle would be in the middle and then I just take the um, tacky glue here and this does dry clear and I just sort of went along and just smudged this around the edges but I didn't want so much that it would like uh, come back up but I want to make sure that the edges are glued down I'm just going to get a little bit more there and then I just very carefully lined this up with the hole and I made sure not to get any glue around where this is going to stick in and then I basically pushed it down and then I just held it there like that for a minute or two and that um, seemed to kind of adhere it there and I can still now get the tack out and push it back in no problem and our little swatch thing stays on there so that's sort of how I did those little homemade swatches and then these actually all fit in here together which is convenient however I can't close the top so I think I might actually cut the sides off of this and then just have this all sitting in the drawer next to me and now one thing I did mention as I was doing the tutorials on Patreon was the two colors that I had bought myself were the two colors that I never used for any of these tutorials. So do you really need a brown and a black? I'm not sure. I guess it depends what kind of pictures that you're using. But I ended up using all of the other colors except for these two, which was just kind of interesting. So make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give a like to the video if you enjoyed this. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!